to speed up the process a little. I see blue light, and when I look at the sun, it looks a little reddish already. For the physicist among you, light that scatters over an angle of 90 degrees, this light that scatters in this direction, the people who pay the most tonight, who are sitting right here, <laughs> the light is also linearly polarized. That was also the case with the, roke, with the smoke experiment, but I didn't mention that. But for those of you who are sitting here, I can show you with my polarimeter, when I rotate my polarimeter, that I can the blue sky completely dark, and I can the blue sky completely bright again. The people who are sitting there, the angle of scattering is not 90 degrees. So they won't see it so well. But you people see it very well, don't you? 100% polarized. Look at that sun. <laughs> Let's face it, isn't this incredibly romantic? <laughs> In 26100, the center of MIT, you are seeing in the lecture hall a red sunset. And in fact, the sun is so red now that I think the sunset is very close. <laughs> I have given, in this lecture hall, about 800 lectures. And it is wonderful to be back here. But it really hurts to know that this is my last lecture in 26100. I have therefore decided that I want to leave you in style. And the way I will do that is to leave 26100 in my own private rocket. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now we have about 15 minutes left for questions. And if you have a question, raise your hand, then Claire will come to you with the microphone, and then I hope we can communicate that way. You phrase the question and I will 
try to give the answer. So who wants to go first? There's a person there. Yes, we see your hand here. You'll come next. Thank you for a beautiful lecture. Um, I'm tempted to ask you what pi is. It's not so but, easy for me <laughs> to understand you. Uh, thank you for a beautiful lecture. I'm tempted to ask you what pi is, but I think I better ask instead. Well, uh, have you ever, ever had gone to a Thanksgiving dinner? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, are you familiar with the alleged phenomenon of a green flash at sunset? And, the and is yes. Can you explain that, please? I've seen it many times. The explanation is not as simple as you may think. I would suggest, and I, may, I mean that seriously, since it's a short answer is not possible that you look it up on the web, it's well described. I have seen it many times in Austria, in the mountains. That indeed, the last fraction of setting of the sun, that you may, but not always, see a green flash. And if you ever want to see it, you have to be with two people. One person has to be standing next to you, and you should not look at the sun. Because if you look at the sun, even though there's almost no sunlight left, you still, your, your retina is still too overexposed. And so to you, when you look like this, should, should say, look now! And then you look, <laughs> and that's the way it is. There's a question right here. Why don't we take that first? And then there's, there's a woman over there. And this gentleman, oh, also, yeah. Well, I just want to thank you for the lecture. And, and I was and wondering. As, as, a youngster, um, <laughs> as, a, as a youngster, I read a, a book which told me to stare at the sun. Then I can change things by staring at things. Now, what I, I used to stare at sun at sunset. You stare at the sun. sun at sunset. At sunset. That's a few Not a very good idea. You have to be very careful. I found out the hard way. And so you damaged your eyes and you asked for it. Okay. <laughs> uh, I got it. Um, but that, the, the key thing was that I, after that I was supposed to stay at a white wall, which I did. But, but, but I saw a, a, a what red you saw. spot moving around wherever I might Probably the moving. spot was not red but green. Uh -huh. It's a well-known phenomenon. Uh -huh. So you have indeed done something to your retina, uh -huh. and that is the message that is sent to your brains, yeah, uh -huh. then tell you the green after effect. It's a very well known effect. Uh -huh. okay. You don't even have to look to the sun. Okay. You can even do it with a light like that and stare in that light for some time, and then all of a sudden look at the white wall, uh -huh. and you see a different color. It's a very interesting thing. Yeah. And physics cannot explain that. But you see, this is, this is neurology. And so it's not our responsibility to explain it. <laughs> so this is, I guess, a more personal Speak question. Speak as loud as you can because I have a hearing okay. disability. This is a more personal question. I was just wondering, like, what inspired you to become such a great professor? Why is what? What inspired you to become a professor and a great one at that? Can you translate? I can't hear you. What inspired you? Why is what? What inspired you to become a professor? Oh, that was luck. <laughs> I had my training in physics, and then I had some offers for one year postdoc to the United States. And for reasons that are not so clear, I picked MIT because a whole new field was born here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, initiated by Professor Bruno Rossi, who was at MIT, executed beautifully by Riccardo Giacconi, who received not too long ago the Nobel Prize for that. That was the discovery of X-ray astronomy. And even though I knew nothing about astronomy at the time, I decided it was time to change fields. So I accepted the offer at MIT, and then, for reasons that are still unclear to me, but George Clark, who is in the audience, knows probably why, they offered me a professorship. <laughs> and I never left. <laughs> Does that answer your question?
Yeah, you need the microphone here. Oh, we have 10 more minutes, so we can have handle quite a few questions. So I, uh, I sat in on your lectures here, I think about 20 years ago, and I'd forgotten that one thing that I learned from you was how to draw dotted lines on chalkboards. <laughs> Which I actually used myself when, uh, when I was a professor for some number of years, so a very useful skill. <laughs> but, but here's what I'd like to ask you. I'd like to ask you uh, when you started uh, teaching uh, physics and how your lectures evolved over time. How, what was the last question? Uh, how, how did your lectures uh, evolve over time? How, <laughs> didn't get it. How did what? your lectures evolve over time? Yeah. <laughs> I think I was always eccentric. <laughs> it's true. And so from day one, my lectures were always different from the mean. But of course, they evolved in a way that grew substantially. And that is not because of the dotting of the line, because I could already do that in high school. <laughs> Today, there are hundreds of my lectures that can be viewed on the web. Two complete courses. The first course for freshmen, the second course, electricity and magnetism, and the first course for sophomores, vibrations and waves. They are now being viewed daily on average by 6,000 people all over the world, which is 2 million per year. And so every morning when I wake up and during the day, about two dozen questions come to me by email from all over the world. <laughs> Many ask questions and I answer every single email. But it is amazing that six professors want to know how I make those dotted lines. 